Yo, what's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, it's Jay Briggs here, continuing to cook up this NBA action, man. Y'all know we do here on the Jam Session. We cook up every single game, every single day. Yesterday, we had one play officially over at Pig Dogs Premium. We did drop it, man. We had the Indiana Pacers. Uh, hey, Tyrese Halliburton had one of his worst games of the season. And we don't call the Pacers the Halliburtons for no reason. Um, as I tell you guys all the time, he's the motor, the transmission, the windshield wipers, the tires. He's the guy that makes that team go. All-star starter this year, he's that good. But terrible game last night. Not surprised to see his team fall flat. Uh, I think he'll bounce back in his next one. And we're trying to bounce back today on a money-making Tuesday. We got a huge card on a Tuesday, man. 11 games. Y'all know the drill, man. We trying to cook it up and smash it per usual. I appreciate each and every one of you boys and girls that tune in and watch this video. If you appreciate the content that I do, all I ask is that you smash that like button for me. You subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as I always say, man, if you're rocking with me, rock with me. I'm active on Twitter all day long. There's a link for that in the description below. And, of course, I have premium plays over at the site. Money making Tuesday. Bounce back Tuesday. Again, we had one play only yesterday, and it was the Pacers. So, with this huge card, man, we're trying to we're trying to smash it, man. So, without further ado, let's do exactly that. Let's make some money tonight. And without further ado, let's hop right into tonight's NBA action. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. First game up, we got the Golden State Warriors out on the road facing the Washington Wizards. Wizards, 11.5 point home dogs here in this one. Gonna be honest, and call a spade a spade. This is not one of my favorite games tonight. Um, if I were to bet this thing, though, I would take Golden State. Uh, I wouldn't try to catch the falling knife with the Washington Wizards. I would take the Warriors, who have been fairly hot here recently, and expect them to blow out a bad team. Now, am I overly enthused with laying double digits on the road with the Warriors, a 50-50 team in, in all honesty? No, I'm not. But should the Warriors... Kick the crap out of the Wizards. Yes, the Wizards, they're now tied with the um, Pistons for the worst record in the NBA. Like, let's be honest with how bad the Wizards are. Um, yes, ATS, they can be competitive in certain situations, but I haven't really seen those signs from them recently. Not enough for me to even think about trying to catch the falling knife here in this situation. Um, if the Warriors play Warrior-style basketball and – you know, come out here and hoop, they should win this game by like 15 plus points. Does that mean I'm rushing to the window to lay 11 and a half on the road with the Warriors in this spot? No, but should they do it? I do believe so. So small lean in our first game of the day on the Golden State Warriors. Next game up, man, we got the Brooklyn Nets. They're out on the road facing the Orlando Magic. Magic, nine and a half point home favorites, man. Basically double digit favorites at home at the crib. Let me paint it. Firstly, the Magic are one of the best ATS teams in the NBA. No longer are they the best, though. They're now number two. Um, our favorite money-making team, who we'll talk about a little later, has regained their rightful spot as the number one ATS team in the NBA, the Oklahoma City Thunder Buddies. But we have made a ton of cash this season also on the Orlando Magic, and I think this is another spot where we can do so. Um, the Nets have won both meetings this season over the Orlando Magic. So this is a double revenge spot at home at the crib. Final scores in that game, hey, 124-104 and 129-101. So the Nets have kicked the crap out of the Magic in both games. Um, Double-digit wins in both. Now, they the first one was back in November on the 14th. The second one was on the 2nd of December. And both games were in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is coming off a win. Um, they did just beat the Grizzlies last night. I was kind of surprised to see that happen. They actually was playing some of the best basketball I've seen them play in quite some time. But on a back end of a back-to-back -back with travel, on an extended road trip, I'm not betting Brooklyn. I think the Magic, a team who we know covers point spreads, kicks the crap out of a team that they are head and shoulders better than in a double revenge spot at home at the crib. I, see, I think uh, Paolo Boncaro will be back tonight. I see Cam Thomas is injured. Uh, ben Simmons won't play tonight. Bad spot for the Nets. Solid bounce back spot for 
Orlando, especially coming off a loss on the road at Atlanta. Hey, they're trying to fight for playoff seeding, a team that hasn't had much playoff success at all. They need to get in. These are the games they have to win, and I think they kick the crap out of a team they're head and shoulders better than who's in a bad spot. So give me the Orlando Magic, land the nine and a half. Hopefully I hear that theme song on the timeline tonight. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Orlando Magic. All right, next game up, we got my favorite team, the Dallas Mavericks out on the road facing the Cleveland Cavs. Cavs laying four and a half points on the Mavs here in this one. Short, sweet, simple. Everybody already knows. I'm on my favorite team tonight, the Dallas Mavericks. Now, is this my top play tonight? I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys, no, it's not. But am I betting the Mavs tonight? Most definitely. Yes, I am. I think this is a legitimate 50-50 game. Um, and I think the Mavs have a legitimate shot to win this game outright. Cleveland has not looked the same coming out of the All-Star break. I know you could look at the scoreboard and say they did beat the Wizards by nine. But as somebody who was watching that game periodically throughout, they didn't look all that well in that basketball game. Heading into the break, red hot. Coming out of it, been a little concerning. I know the same thing could be said about the Mavs against the Pacers. Um, I would say the Mavs went against the Pacers. The scoreboard is not really indicative of how that game was either. Um, yes, they were down double digits for most of the game, but they wouldn't. They didn't get blown out like the scoreboard may suggest. They got out of hand like the last couple minutes of the ball game. All in all, the Mavs have been hot. And I think in a bounce back spot on the road, a spot where we have been able to trust them for most of the season, the Mavs on the road has been their spot, especially ATS. I think they have a legitimate shot to win this game outright. I think they have the best player in the on the floor is Luka Doncic, of course. Um, I know Cleveland's fairly good defensively, but I don't know. I don't know. Is this a little homerish? Maybe. But in all honesty, I don't understand the line. If I was a line maker, it'd probably be two and a half um, for Cleveland. Do they probably deserve to be home favorites? Yeah, they did beat the Mavs earlier this season in Dallas, and they do have the better record this thus far this season. Need I remind you guys, though, Mavs are in the West where, where it's way tougher than in the East. Cleveland hasn't looked that good to me coming out of the break. And I don't want to look at them as the team before the break. I kind of want to look at them for what they are right here, right now, and what I know them to be in the totality of things. And when I think about these two teams in the totality of things, me personally, I think the Mavs are the better team. I think they win this game tonight, taking them plus the four and a half and sprinkling it on the money line. Again, is it my top play tonight? No, it's not. So you guys don't have to worry about that for you guys that are on the edge of your seat. It's not my top play tonight, but I am most definitely betting my team, the Dallas Mavericks, tonight. Next game up, we got the Utah Jazz out on the road facing the Atlanta Hawks. Hawks, one and a half point home dogs here in this one. I'm on the Hawks, man. I'm on the Hawks. This one's not even that complicated for me. Yes, the Hawks are the worst ATS team in basketball. Yes, yeah, yes, they are. Yes, yes, yes. We know that. We know that at this point. Um, a lot of you guys were upset with me the other day when you saw that my NBA play of the day was the Atlanta Hawks against the Orlando Magic, the worst ATS team in basketball against the best ATS team in basketball. But I told you guys, stay pat. I like the spot here for Atlanta. No Trey Young. DeJounte Murray and company came out and looked really, really good in that game. And if they come out tonight and look anything remotely close to what they did in that game, I think they beat the Jazz, man. We know what's up with Utah. Let's not overcomplicate it. We've known what's up with Utah for quite some time. At home, money-making team. On the road, not so much. They've been better than they were to start the season. To start the season, it was just an automatic fade to Jazz on the road. Here in this spot, do I understand why they're slightly favored here? Yes, the Hawks are without their best player. Um, Jazz are you know, fairly rested, but I think the Hawks get this done at home. Um, I think they get it done at home. I'm on the Atlanta Hawks here in this spot. I'm fading the Jazz on the road. Um, Atlanta looked really good in that last game, and again, if they look anything remotely close, I think they win this basketball game. Give me Atlanta, home dog, here in that one. Next game up, man, we got the Philadelphia 76ers out on the road facing the Boston Celtics. Celtics! Laying 12 and a half on the Sixers. This is a TV game tonight. This game will be on TNT. TNT tonight. With that being said, 
I'm probably not going to bet this thing. Um, of course, I think the Celtics are the best team in the league. Um, of course, I tell you guys all the time, my futures ticket that I placed at the beginning of the season was on the Boston Celtics. Um, if the Celtics come out here and play Celtic-style basketball, they're going to kick the crap out of the Philadelphia 76ers. Could I see the Sixers trying to be competitive on national TV, though, on TNT? I could. Would I be surprised if the Celtics won this game by, like, eight, nine points? No, I wouldn't. Um, again, is that enough for me to try to take Philadelphia here on the road? No, it's not. Am I overly enthused with Lang, 12 and a half with Boston at home, a spot where they haven't been the best ATS? No, not necessarily. I lean Boston. Again, if they come out here and play their best brand of basketball, they're going to kick the living crap out of the Sixers. But would I be surprised if the Sixers competed in this game on national TV? No, I wouldn't. So not one of my favorite games tonight. Small lean on the Celtics. They should beat up on the Sixers. No, indeed, at home, at the crib. Um, so that's what I like here. Give me Boston in a small lean. Next game up, we got the New Orleans Pelicans out on the road facing the New York Knicks. Knicks. Two and a half point home dogs in this one. Nick stole one, or at least a lot of people seem to think so. Coach Monty Williams seemed to think so. Boy, he was hot. He was hot. Kind of was a foul. <laughs> kind of was a foul. But you got to play through the whistle, man. But I mean, I know, I know. That was at the end of the game. That was crazy ending. Um, I want to take the Knicks here. At home in the garden. But I'm probably not going to bet this thing either. Um, I'm just going to spade a spade with you guys today. Matchup wise. I think the Knicks can get them. At home at the crib. But coming off of the all that yesterday. It's not a game that I'm necessarily rushing to the window to bet. Especially with a huge card today in the NBA like we have. So I'm passing this game. Small lane on the Knicks. Personally, probably not betting it. Would I be surprised if New Orleans got it done? No, New Orleans is quietly putting together a nice season. The same thing about New Orleans looms over their season, though. Health. 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 And that's kind of what's looming over this game as well. Is, y is Zion going to play? I think he's questionable. Um, so, not really in love with this thing. Small lean on the Knicks. Probably going to leave it alone because of who knows? <laughs> I'm just being real, bro. I'm just being real. Next game up, we got the San Antonio Spurs out on the road facing the Minnesota Timberwolves, a.k.a. the House of Disappointment. I'm on San Antonio in this one. It's just a pure fade of Minnesota as a huge favorite. They're going to be up 15, 20-plus points in this game. You got to hold your nose if you're betting San Antonio because the T-Wolves are going to go up 20. They're going to look really good and stretch it in this basketball game, and then all of a sudden, they're going to fall apart, and they're going to win the game by like seven. Typical Minnesota, and it's kind of been typical San Antonio, too. We've seen San Antonio sneaking some back doors recently. That's just how I see this game. That's how I see the Minnesota Timberwolves. You will almost never catch me laying double digit with Minnesota again. Um, I just I just can't do it. I just can't do it. They are called the house of disappointment for a reason. In spots where it looked like they should blow out a team, their head and shoulders better than, they come out and are doing that and then find a way to piss away the cover. That's why they're named the House of Disappointment. That's what they've been the last two seasons, and I kind of think that's exactly what we're going to see here tonight, a backdoor cover from San Antonio. Um, so give me the Spurs, plus the 13 and a half here in this one. Now, would I be surprised if Minnesota aired them out? No, I wouldn't. They should air them out. They are ahead and showed us the better team at home. But no, we know we know this Timberwolves team. We know them. We know them. They're called the House of Disappointment for a reason. I don't bet the Spurs often. I think 13 and a half in my back pocket is enough to do so, though. Give me San Antonio plus the points here in this one. Next game up, man, we got your Chicago Bulls <laughs> laying 11 and a half on the Detroit Pistons. Give me the Bulls. What's up with the Bulls, man? We know what's up with them. They play a good team, they're going to lose. They play a bad team. I'm going to kick the crap out of them. They play a high team. Who knows what's going to happen? That's what I've come to figure out with the Bulls. Bulls, I feel like when they've been huge favorites this season, they've been a high. Uh, I could actually verify it. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, it's going to take a second, though. Hold on. 
I don't feel like looking that up. I feel like the Bulls, as huge favorites, be kicking the crap out of people. Has Detroit, in certain situations, covered the point spread as, as sizable dogs? Yes. Is Detroit low-key playing some of the best basketball we've seen them play all season? Yes. But on the back end of a back-to-back with travel, leaving New York, and off a frustrating loss like they had last night, I'm not betting them. I'm not. They're still one of the worst teams in the NBA. So, with that being said, I like the Bulls here. Um, somebody put in the comments what the Bulls are as huge favorites this season. That's like, let's do like six and a half, seven and a half point favorites. Because I don't think they've been this big of a favorite on anybody this season. But I see the path here for the Bulls to kick the crap out of the Pistons. Bad spot for the Pistons. Backing up a back-to-back with travel. Um, coming off a really frustrating, emotional loss in the Garden yesterday. I think it's a bad spot for them. Bulls rested. Bulls always kicked the crap out of the Pistons. Back to them Jordan days. We know that. We know that. Um, DeRozan, he gonna hoop tonight. Levine not playing. You know, I like that. <laughs> I'm just talking. But give me the Bulls here. They're gonna kick the crap out of the Pistons. At least that's how I see it. Pistons, will they be able to make money on them in certain spots for the remainder of the season? Yes. Do I think today's one of those spots? No. Next game up. We got the Charlotte Hornets out on the road facing the Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks, 14 and a half point home favorites here in this one. This is two of the three worst ATS teams in basketball. The worst ATS team in basketball, we all know, is the Atlanta Hawks. Right in front of them is the Milwaukee Bucks, and right in front of them is the Charlotte Hornets. We see they're both 23 and 34 against the number. Milwaukee's 24, 34, and 1. They got a tie in there. <sighs> I'm on the Hornets. Hornets are playing some of their best basketball of the season. I use YouTube. <laughs> Hornets been playing some of their best basketball of the season. The Bucks. Yeah, they've come out of the All Star break looking good, but do we really want to lay 14 and a half with Milwaukee? Like, is that something we really want to do? No, it's not. Like. The reason they're this bad against the number is because they play lack of physical defenses in, cert in certain situations in the game that allows bad teams to score meaningless buckets that, in the grand scheme of things, matter. And that's why the Bucks are so bad against the number. Now, can the Bucks beat the Hornets by 14 and a half? Yes, they can. But do I want to lay 14 and a half points with Milwaukee? No, I don't. It's just not something I'm interested in doing. So, with that being said, Charlotte, again, playing their best basketball of the season, I think can compete here. I'm going to lean towards Charlotte getting the points in this one. Um, 14 and a half is insane. Insane, especially with how terrible they have been against the number this season. Next game up, short, sweet, simple. We're on the Thunder Buddies. <laughs> short, sweet, simple. Yes, I tried to catch the falling knife the last game. These two teams just played the other day in Houston. I tried to catch the falling knife with the Houston Rockets. Not even a falling knife. It was really a good a good play, in my opinion. It was a really good play. Houston at home is a different animal. Um, they've been they've made us a lot of money at home this season. Thunder Buddies on the road still be open. Rockets, we say it all the time. Every time we see them at home, we can make money on them on the road. Just fade them. Just fade them. And if they couldn't do anything at home against the Thunder, they damn sure not going to do nothing against the Thunder on the road. Laying it. Short, sweet, simple. <laughs> Thunder buddies for life. Next game up, we got the Miami Heat out of the road facing the Portland Trail Blazers. Not a game I'm totally interested in tonight. Um... I want to see this injury report for Miami clear up. They did look good yesterday, but on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, I'm not necessarily interested in laying six and a half. Should they beat up on the Blazers? Yes, the Blazers, I don't know what they got going on right now. Um, this team seems so disinterested. I wouldn't be f surprised if if uh, they fired their coach. Like I know he in his first year, but, man, these boys is t not looking good at all. It's Miami or pass here. Um, again, I want to see the injury report clear up, and I want to see what's going to happen. They are on the back end of a back-to-back, -back, and it is early in the morning, so some guys could pop up later today as well. Miami or nothing here, though. They looked good last night. 
The Blazers seem disinterested. Not looking at that. And that's going to conclude this episode of my NBA Jam Session. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you boys and girls that tune in and watch this video. If you appreciate the content that I do, all I ask is that you smash that like button for me. You subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, say, man, if you rocking with me, rock with me. I'm active on Twitter all day long. There's a link for that in the description below. And, of course, I have premium plays over at the site, including that NBA play of the day, man, looking to bounce back on it today, hitting out about a 58% clip on that play for the season. You guys can join me long-term at Pick Dogs Premium, or you can join my all-access club. The information for that is in the description below. Got to have a pretty – um, big bankroll to join the All Access Club because you got to be able to handle the volume of betting the NBA pretty big nightly. But if that is you, uh, you should think about joining it, man. The guys that have been in there from the start are up tremendously, up over a hundred grand for the season. It's insane. So you guys should think about joining it if it's for you. Hey, let me know if I should bring back my afternoon live show. Um, I haven't been doing it in a while. I haven't really done it at all this season. I did it a lot last season. I'm thinking about bringing it back. Popping some guests on, having some fun, talking some hoops later on in the day. It won't be every day if I do. I'm going to tell you that right now. It won't be every day. But on days where there are huge cards, talk a little more hoops later on in the day. Because now that we're in the back end of the season as well, I feel like the injury manipulation game is about to start being played again. I might start doing the afternoon live show again. Let me know if y'all want that in the comments. And let me know who you guys would want to see on that afternoon live show, man. It's been your guy, Jay Briggs. Money-making Tuesday. Bounce back Tuesday. See you guys soon. I'm out of here.